Let's talk about monetization. So I've told you about my monetization model. Basically, I'm reviewing other products, I'm giving feedback, I'm recommending. What up? My name is Matt. My wife here is, her name is New. If you Google hottest girl in Chiang Mai, she's going to be number one. I do SEO. <laughs> All right. So this is profit growth for a website that we acquired, acquired like July 2017. And you can see that we started, when we acquired this website, it was making about $2,000 a month. As things go, went forward around month 12, we broke through that 20K a month ceiling. And then if we expand things out further, we eventually broke through that 50K a month ceiling, which is great. We're super happy about that. But the interesting thing that you have guys heard multiple times is that websites, content websites like this, affiliate marketing websites like this, are no, now selling at a 40x monthly profit, which meant this website, which I barely own very long at all, could sell for six hundred dollars to $700,000. So this is the topic of today's presentation. So in case we haven't met before, my name is Matt. I was born in a city called Fresno, California. Is anyone from Fresno? Yeah, I didn't think so. All right. Um, I went to UC San Diego to study electrical engineering which sucked ass. Uh, I was an uh, engineer working in Silicon Valley, s s cubicle junkie, 60 hour weeks, just freaking terrible. So eventually, like most of you guys here, I started experimenting with m making money online and the first uh, taste of that I got was affiliate marketing via SEO. Eventually started having enough success with that, I decided to quit my job, sell my shit and start traveling all full time. So since then, it's looked like this. I founded Diggity Marketing, where I blog about tested SEO techniques. Like, I'm still an engineer at heart, so I'm still testing everything just like an engineer would when it comes to ranking in Google. I offer SEO consulting to beginner and advanced SEOs all the way up to the agency level. I'm the CEO and founder of a seven-figure affiliate marketing agency called LeadSpring, uh, the, the director of a client-facing SEO agency called The Search Initiative. I have a backlink service called Authority Builders, and I'm the host of the Chiang Mai SEO conference. Enough about me. This case study is called a six-figure flip story, and the case study goes like this. We started this website July 2017. In the beginning, monthly profit was $2,125. And that's it. And 11 months later, uh, we broke through 20K a month. 20 months later, 50K a month. And uh, this website currently has 457 keywords on page one of Google, 300,000 visitors per month. And in case you're wondering what do we do to grow this website, you're about to learn everything. Everything, all the, the website tactics, the on-site optimization, all the backlinks we've built, the mindsets, the vendors, the tricks, everything that we did. And though, although you're going to be learning about this case study through my experience with this website, I'm going to flip things around. I'm going to be showing this to you like a playbook so you can apply this to your own website, whether it's an affiliate website, whether it's a SaaS product, whether you bought it or you built it from scratch. That's how I'm going to present it to you guys. So if you guys have a website, who has a website in here? Okay, this is when you get your cameras and take a bunch of notes. All right, so here's the agenda. <clears throat> We're going to start with why purchase a website, and I'm going to give you some techniques to find diamonds in the rough, because that's important. I'm going to give you a taste of what we call the super audit. So it's an audit we, we termed at uh, my company, LeadSpring. It basically takes your, your website and turns it into a Lamborghini. Then I'm going to show you some on-site SEO hacks. What can you do to your website itself to make it rank higher? A backlinking strategy for 2020 and beyond. We'll get into something after that. We're going to talk about content, how content is super important to ranking in 2020. Some creative monetization tactics and different strategies that we can use to think outside the box and monetize websites. And then, of course, like everyone's talking about, how to prepare for a big, big exit. All right. So let's talk about why purchase a website in the first place. And then I'll give you some criteria on how to find the diamonds in the rough. So first, I've been doing affiliate marketing for a long time. I would say about 11 years. And I would say I'm pretty good, better than most at figuring out how much money a niche will make before I jump into it. That said, I'm wrong more than I'm right. 
The great thing about buying a business or buying a website is you get to see all the numbers up front. You get their P&L. You get to look exactly and see, if I bought this website, if I bought this business, this is the bare minimum it would do. That's my starting point. Second, when you buy a business, buy a content website, you get to avoid what's called the Google Sandbox. The Google Sandbox is basically this leash that Google puts on new websites. Like if you build a brand new website, it doesn't matter what you do, it's just gonna, not going to go anywhere for a while. And third, it's just efficient use of your resources. My most expensive cost at my business is human resource, my, my people's time. So at a certain point in your business's evolution, you need to take a look and see, is it still worth it to be trading all my time instead of saving money? Or should I just pay that money up front and get all that time back so I can apply that to a moving website, which is going to be funner anyways? All right, so let's talk about how to find a website for purchase. This is how to find the diamonds in a rough. Now, I recommend doing this technique or this, uh, this, this practice with a buddy. You know, one of you guys be the good cop. That's the one who is arguing to get into the niche. And then you're going to have the other one's going to be the bad cop who's going to be like, no, we shouldn't get into the niche for so-and-so reasons. So here's what bad cop looks at. Or no, good cop. <clears throat> First, in the realm of niche research, He's going to plug the website or the business into Google Trends. You just pu plug in the niche into Google Trends and see if things are growing. If things are growing, then you don't even need to do anything and you're going to get some gains. After that, you're going to look to see is if it's what I call an oh shit niche. An oh shit niche is basically one of those niches that people will do just about anything to fix. Think the big ones, health, wealth, and relationships. These are the ones that people get out their wallets for. These are pretty much the only niches that I'll touch. And then he's going to look for some monetization quick wins. How can we get money back real quick from that investment? First, did this website, did this website that I'm talking about only review a certain amount of products in the niche? Well, I'm in the affiliate marketing space, and most of, most of the time where you're making money is you're reviewing different things, and you're, you're referring people to the right products, the ones at the top of the list, stuff like that. But did the website that I'm looking at only review a certain subset of the, of the topics and the products in the niche? I can sweep up the rest. After that, is it possible? Like, is this website monetized with Amazon affiliates, which has a horrendously terrible conversion rate? Well, conversion rate's pretty good, but the commission rate is absolutely terrible. So we can switch that out and work directly with manufacturers, make some relationships, and get a much higher commission. Quick win. Next, are the, am I recommending products that are out of stock, or are they having, like, really terrible reviews on Amazon? Great, we can switch those out, too. Next, is this website what we like to call an authority website? The key factor with authority websites is that they instantly rank new content when they publish it. Think about the major websites on the internet. We're going to talk more about this later. It's very important. And then lastly, did this website just have poor keyword research? Could it talk about way more topics than it actually did? OK, now let's talk about bad cop. Here's what bad cop is going to look at. First. Does this niche require a super geeky level of knowledge to write about it? I really like fantasy books, fantasy novels. Anyone else like fantasy books? Oh, come on, there's more nerds in here than that. Jeez. All right, but there's this website called bestfantasybooks.com. And basically, all it does is just ranks like in various sub-niches of fantasy, like what are the most popular fantasy books or what are the best ones, right? And even though I love fantasy books, I would never be able to run that site because it's just unscalable. You have to read every single one of those things. So avoid niches like that. Next is, are you in a niche that requires frequent updates? Video games, technology, routers change every day. There's new iPhones out like every 10 minutes. Like don't get into the niches like that. Is it a fad niche? Is it something like hoverboards? What happened to those things? That's just, it's going gonna, it's gonna to ride for a while and it's just going to flop. Are the sites ranking above it super old or super authoritative? Don't go head to head to, with WebMD. Don't go head to head with Healthline and sites like that. NerdWallet. Don't even touch it. And then lastly, is this site a YMYL site? Your money, your life. So these are niches like medical advice and finance where you're going to be incre increasingly scrutinized by Google's algorithm over time. It's just going to get harder. OK, so you stack them up, good, good cop and bad cop talk. They, they have a discussion, and one of them wins, and you decide you want to buy the site. Let's say you decided to buy it. Here's what our site looked like. When we tossed into Google Trends, it was increasing. Even, even if we didn't do shit, we were going to rise. 
Second, it was in the beauty niche, which is an oh shit niche. If you don't think it's an oh shit niche, you're probably a dude. Topic coverage, it only covered about 30% of the topics that it could, could have covered in the niche. So we figured this out real quick by doing a content gap analysis with a tool called Ahrefs, which I'll introduce you to very shortly. This website was almost an authority website, meaning it had that ability to post a piece of content and then instantly be on page one with Google with it. And what I would do to figure this out is I would look at the post date on the latest post and then I would cross-reference and try to figure out when those posts pulled traffic. It was about a month and a half time, we would definitely improve on that. So here's the starting line. Purchase a website for $51,000. So don't let this number scare you. This is just the particular website we purchased because of how much money it was making and the multiple it had, that's how much it was. You can find websites. I literally bought a website today for $8,000. So uh, after that, monthly profit, $2,125.34. It was monetized completely with private offers, direct with manufacturers, direct with suppliers of the supplements we were selling, stuff like that. The traffic was 38,000 visitors per month. Number of backlinks, we'll talk about backlinks if you don't know what those are, 51 of these bad boys. And then 164 keywords on page one. So this is where we get into what we did. This is, this is where you get out your phones and your notebooks. And it all starts with the super audit. In the first month, we doubled revenue for the site. And that's definitely just due to the super audit thing. The name's not that clever, it's an audit, super. But this is basically what you wanna do right away when you first start working on a new website. First, first, you want to reverse engineer the competition. <clears throat> Here's how to do this. Figure out the main keyword for each of your categories. So like, let's say you have a golf website. What's a category? That would be like best golf drivers. Another one would be uh, how to drive a golf ball. Another one might be what's the best putter. So these are all different categories of what you can talk about. You're going to take that main keyword, so best golf drivers. You're going to plug it in a tool, Ahrefs, and then you're gonna, you're gonna use this also ranks for feature. What that's gonna do, it's gonna look at every single web page on page one, and it's gonna tell you every other keyword besides best golf drivers that it ranks for. Export, and you're done. You've just done complete keyword research in five minutes for one of these categories. Move on to the next one, and now just continue to do that. You're completely done your keyword research. Next, you're gonna reverse engineer yourself. This is where you're gonna find out what you're ranking for. Again, you're gonna use that tool Ahrefs, and you might feel like you have an idea of what this website special is in, what you're good at, but you're looking for surprises, and you're looking for surprises in this format. First, you're looking for keywords in positions five through 10. These are ones that are almost there, almost in those money-making positions. They need just need a little bit of a nudge. So the solution, what you can do here, here is first, Send a target anchor text link. Anyone not know what an anchor text is? Okay, awesome. Basically, a backlink. So a backlink's in a piece of content and the highlighted part, like if I wrote, come check it out, come, come read about this at Diggity Marketing and Diggity Marketing was highlighted, that's the anchor text. So sometimes all you need to do is get a backlink that has that exact keyword you wanna rank for as the anchor text. Sometimes that's all it takes. Next is look at the keyword density. Am I trying to rank for best golf drivers? Well, I haven't even written the word best or golf or, or driver on the page. Like, it's sometimes you've, you've written uh, top rated golf clubs or something like that. So spell out the word you want to rank for exactly on there. A, a lot of times that's all it takes too. Then you're looking for keywords on page two to three. These are what I like to call accidental rankers. Now, here's an example of this. Let's say, for example, you had a page ranking for best ergonomic chairs. You, had, you wrote a piece of content ranking ergonomic chairs, and you found out you were accidentally ranking for a keyword like scoliosis ergonomics. Why would that happen? Because you just wrote, oh, this, this chair is excellent for those with scoliosis. It just, it just happened. So what you need to do at this point is either build out some subsection on this particular page or write a new page on it already. Google already likes you for this, so just run with it. Next, you're gonna set aside all these tools. You're just gonna do some word of mouth research. You're gonna find out the best products and topics to talk about in the niche. And what, that, what that's gonna get you is you're gonna get insight into people that actually like it. This is gonna be great stuff to talk about on your website. Here's where you can ask, start with the Facebook groups. Here's just an example, me jumping in one of the Facebook groups. Hey guys, have you ever had any blah, blah, blah supplements work for you? If so, which ones? 
We have Quora, of course, and Reddit's also great, but Answer the Public is absolutely clutch for getting topics to talk about. What are the hot topics that everyone's searching about? Next, click-through rate optimization. So what we're talking about with click-through rate optimization is optimizing what we call the title and the description of each of our articles to steal the clicks from the search result. So when you see a Google, re Google search result, you want to be optimized to get those clicks. So what is a title, title and meta description? So if we look at this as a normal result on Google, this is me ranking for best SEO web hosting. The part at the top up here, this is the title, right? The part at the bottom here, this is the description. These are both completely within your control. You can write whatever you want in these, these spots. And they very highly influence how much these things get clicked. Now don't sleep on CTR, don't, don't sleep on click-through rate. If we think about what Google wants, th their job is to serve up what people want to read. What better way to indicate that to Google than what people click on and how long they read it for. So this is super important. How do you optimize these titles and meta descriptions? Good question. Well, first let's talk about why it's so important. So check this out. This is a percentage of clicks on where you, where you would be on positions one through two, or pages one through two, and the percentage of clicks you would get in each spot. As you can see here, positions one through four sweep up a big chunk of it. So it's within your best interest to optimize in these spots. So here's some takeaways. First, add numbers to your post. For some reason, odd numbers work a lot better, 20% better. I have no idea why. Add the year and the month in there. So just to let people know this is a current article. We can use power words, add emotion, use brackets to draw the eye. So here's an example of this, nine insanely ridiculous ways to trigger people on social media, 2019. This stuff seems cheesy, but I promise it works, right? All right, so next. We're gonna do baseline conversion rate optimization, the CRO, uh, if you want the acronym. So this is before you're doing any A-B testing. This is kind of just the stuff you know is gonna work. Maybe you read it on a blog post or you have the experience, but this is just stuff that works. Starting with adding featured images to the beginning of every article. If I make an article about best golf drivers, have a picture of golf drivers at the top of it, have a big headline that says best golf drivers. 2020, whatever. People have ADD these days. They're flipping through for the results, going at pages, just going back to the search result as soon as possible when they don't feel like they're in the right place. So just show them the golf drivers, make them know that they're in the right place. Next, add urgency and emotion to all your copy. There's, there's nothing worse than getting through a 3,000 word article that has no feeling to it. Use strong intro paragraphs. I can't stress this enough. So your first intro paragraph, that's when you hook people in. That's your only chance to hook people in. So some different techniques I use is, first you can use fear. You can make them feel like if they don't read this article, they're gonna buy the wrong golf driver, they're gonna waste money. You can use entertainment, you can uh, like speak with a funny angle so they feel like if, even if I don't learn anything from this article, it's just gonna be a fun time anyways. Or you can hit them with a bunch of facts. You can try to educate them right away to prove that you know what you're talking about. Critical, critical this stuff. Have short paragraphs. One to three sentence paragraphs maximum. Don't serve up a big wall of text. No one's gonna read that shit. Have contrasting CTA colors. Okay, check this out. If your website's green, you're gonna look at the color wheel. Just Google color wheel. You're gonna look at green and then you're gonna look at the opposite end and you're gonna see colors like red, orange. These are colors that are opposite but complementary to the color of your website, meaning they're gonna pop off your page. So you're gonna take that color red and you're gonna use that for your call to actions and you're never gonna use it anywhere else. What that's gonna do is gonna train the reader to only take action when they see the color red. Next, you're gonna start replacing those products. Remember when we identified, okay, we're reviewing products that are, I don't know, out of stock or on Amazon, stuff like that. You're gonna start replacing these guys and you're gonna get a quick return. All right, and now, because we've done all that keyword research, it's time to prioritize. You're gonna start writing out that content, but you need to start prioritizing it because you probably found a lot. So make a table like this, and you're gonna rank each topic based on whether it's monetizable or not, whether it's on a solid affiliate program, whether the search volume's good, if it's relevant to the current state of your site. Now, I know this might seem like a lot of work, but I'm telling you, this stuff play, pays off. This super audit pays off. Not sure if you noticed this, but we doubled revenue in the first month of owning this thing. 
All right, so let's talk about some on-site SEO hacks. What is on-site SEO? This is the set of actions you would take to optimize your own website. Now, let's talk about some quick on-site wins that we saw with this particular website. We got excellent gains from title tag optimization. Remember I told you about these title tags? Key SEO 101 is just take that main keyword that you're trying to rank for, keep it together in a string, and push it to the front of the title tag. SEO 101 still works really, really well. Next, we got some nice ranking and conversion gains, just like Nate said, by speeding up the website. So here's the thing with speed optimization. It, you don't necessarily get a bonus in rankings if your website's fast, but you do get filtered if you're slow. So general rule of thumb, try to get a website faster than two seconds. Uh, in, in terms of how bad it can get, don't make your website slower than four seconds. That's basic industry pack practice. All right, now, oh yeah, okay, let's talk about what the biggest gains were. I, I can just tell you right now, the biggest gains you'll ever see with speed optimization is image optimization. So if, you're, if your web page, if you're showing 200 by 300 image, don't upload a huge, gigantic, high, de high definition picture. So just pre-size it and then upload it. That's the best thing you can do. That's 90% of sweet speed optimization. All right. TFIDF. What is TFIDF? The cool thing about doing SEO in 2020 is there's a lot of software that will give you statistical guidance on how to write your content and match Google's algorithm. So basically TFIDF is an algorithm that's used to rank different web pages based on the frequency of different keywords. You know what, I'm not even going to like show this slide. This is just like showing how complicated the damn thing is. You know, Another way to think about this is niche-specific keyword density. What better way to figure out what I need to talk about and how often than to use a piece of software to analyze and tell me exactly what the other guys on page one, where I want to be, have written about and how often they do it. So there's a piece of software called Surfer. I only use two pieces of software to do SEO. One is Ahrefs and one Surfer. What it does is it gives you a playbook and it tells you exactly what keywords you need to talk about and how many times you need to use each of them to blend in exactly with page one. This is the magic of doing SEO these days. All right, <clears throat> let's talk about backlinks. Backlinks, is, as we talked about, uh, there's anchor text involved, but the key thing about backlinks is you gotta know that Google is Google because they put faith in this trust signal, this ranking factor called backlinks. They determine that it's a good indicator of if a website is good or not if other sites are linking to it. So it's very, very critical to get this right if you want to rank higher. So first let's start up with some easy wins. We're going to talk about a technique called backlink sniping. So remember those, those keywords where we identified that were in like positions five through 10, they were almost there, almost in those money-making spots. What you're going to do is you're going to find some backlinks and you're going to send your target anchor text. If I want to rank for best protein powder, I'm going to send the link best with the anchor text, best protein powder. Easy, easy. What that's going to do is going to nudge these keywords to the top positions. And why is that so important? Because this is going to get you some quick wins. As we showed, the amount of traffic you can get in each position on page one is exponentially higher. The, basically, in position two, you pull twice as much traffic as position three. In position one, you pull twice as much traffic as position two. So get those quick wins, get into those top positions. This is a great technique to do it. So here's a playbook on the backlinks that we built for this particular website. This spread, this kind of breakdown of these links that we built is what I would recommend for any website in 2020. So first we do sniper outreach. Here's a question. Let's say I'm trying to rank for best protein powder. What do you think is a better backlink? One from New York Times, which is like obviously a super important website on the internet, probably one of the seed sites, or let's say bodybuilding.com, which is also a jar large website, but it's more relevant. Okay, who would say New York Times? Okay, who would say bodybuilding.com? Okay, everyone's wrong. So the, the actually, sorry about that, it's a trick question, but the, the best website to get a link from is the one who's already ranked number one for best protein powder. Why? Because Google's already determined this is the most relevant and this is the most powerful and this is the most authoritative website on the internet for best protein powder. So this is what you're doing with sniper outreach. You're finding all the keywords you want to rank for. You're going to see who's ranked number one through 30. You're going to send them emails and you're going to ask them, 
hey, how can, I, how can we work together? Can I write a piece of content for you? And in that content, you'll get a link back to your website. That sniper outreach is the best backlinks you can get. After that, we could do shotgun outreach. So we have our VAs where you go, they go in and they just make huge lists of potential websites we want links from. We use software like GMAS. It's a free software to spam the internet. After that, uh, I have a service called Authority Builders where we get guest posts on high relevance websites with a lot of traffic. So getting links from other websites that rank in Google, that builds a lot of trust. After that, editorial links. So getting links from like New York Times, and uh, Smashing Magazine, like big authority websites like this will also build a lot of trust. And then lastly, check this out. There's this girl named Manuka Elena. She runs this expert roundup service. What she does is she identifies a question, a hot question in your niche, and she'll go reach out to experts and ask them what's their feedback on this particular question, make a roundup post for you, and then notify these same influencers that the post is up and ask them to link back to you. It's a super easy service. She built 18 links. So all in all, we built 140 backlinks to this website. Now we're gonna talk about content. First, I wanna talk about why continual content growth and smart content growth is absolutely critical to the growth of any website in organic Google traffic these days. So first, <clears throat> let's talk about the three different stages of a website's evolution. When you're first starting off, oops, now get out of there, go go. When you're first starting out, you're a brand new website. You're in what's called the Google sandbox. And the key feature here is most of your backlinks, unfortunately, are gonna, or most of your keywords are gonna be outside page five. It's just like, you're gonna be starting off slow. That's just the way it is. And when you send links in this period, they don't really have an impact. Nothing really happens, you don't see movement. After a while, you keep doing the right things, you be patient, you're gonna notice one day that you look at your rankings and your traffic and you just went boom, everything looks a lot better. You might see a, a traffic boner. So what this means is you've jumped out of that, you're in the trustworthy phase, you're out of the sandbox, and the key characteristics here is, whoa, most of your keywords will b jump up to page one through four and links start to make a difference here. You'll send a backlink, you'll see a result in a few weeks. After that, you're in authority mode. And the key, key, nice thing right here is that when you publish new content, it starts to instantly rank that content. Check this out. How do you figure out if you're in authority mode? Both Clicky and Google Analytics have views to be able to show you what your traffic is today versus what your traffic is a week ago. You're looking for anomalies like this. A percentage increase in traffic of like 400 or 600%. What that means is this, probably, this article probably just didn't exist last week, now it exists now, and you have a bunch of traffic for it. You're in authority mode, you're instantly ranking, it's instantly pulling traffic. So now that we're in authority mode, what do you think is the best usage of your time to grow this website? Any takers? Content, exactly. You wanna publish your ass off. Anything and anything you could possibly wanna talk about. New products to review, new topics, everything. The 80-20 of SEO just became publishing. You're now, you're now a publisher. So here's where to get some awesome content ideas on autopilot. There's a, also in this Ahrefs tool suite, there's a, a feature called Content Explorer. This is freaking awesome, check this out. So you're gonna take the keyword, uh, your main topic, your niche, the niche of your website. So we're just using college essays here. And then you're gonna toggle this in title button right here. What that's gonna do, it's gonna look out for content pieces on the internet that have your keyword in the title, college essays. You're gonna set a referring domain count, a maximum referring domain count to five, and a minimum traffic of 500. Export, and now you have a complete list of a bunch of pieces of content to write about that can rank with almost no backlinks that pull a bunch of traffic. Easy breezy. I legit can't get, that. okay, cool, now it's working. All right, uh, next, Ahrefs Keywords, uh, Keyword Explorer newly discovered feature. What you can do is type in your keyword and then this tool will email you anytime there's new variation of this keyword comes up or is searched on the internet. Like you could type in carnivore diet and then it'll tell you anytime some new like carnivore diet supplement comes out or something like that. Whenever you're first to talk about something, it always is easiest to rank for it. And then we have Awario, which is great for monitoring social media. So great way to find out new niches. Monitor Joe Rogan and Tim Ferriss before, before that goes viral. 
Um, Mention.com is quite awesome, and Google Alerts just to monitor your keywords and get email feedback whenever anything new comes out. Cool. Uh, let's talk about monetization. So I've told you about my monetization model. Basically, I'm reviewing other products, I'm giving feedback, I'm recommending good ones, and I take an affiliate commission. But here's some outside the box ways that you can monetize a content, content website that can get your multiple hire, can get you more profit. Has anyone ever heard of a concept called the sales cycle? No one in here? Okay, so sales cycle. Basically, it's an old school model that's used to kind of show where a, a prospect is in the process of buying or s buying of something or converting, right? So let me illustrate this with an example. I don't know if you notice this, but I'm a short guy. I have no problem with that. I'm in what's called phase one, the latent pain phase. There's no issue with that. But let's say I go out and I hit on some girl and she's like, get the fuck out of here, shorty. Boom, phase two, acknowledge pain phase. I don't like that shit. So eventually I go home, I get on my computer, I'm searching and I get to phase three, actively seeking a solution. I'm Googling how can short guys look taller. So embarrassing. So then I find a website that says the best way short guys can look taller is to wear high heels for men. Oh, here we go. Okay, so I've moved on to the next phase, phase four, actively seeking the best solution. So I Google best high heels for men. This website tells me Steve Madden sells the best high heels for men. Moved on to the next phase, I'm Googling buy Steve Madden high heels for men, and next thing you know, I'm walking around in high heels. So this is the illustration of where someone is in the sales cycle. If someone Googles best juicer, guess what they want? A freaking juicer. Don't distract them with anything like, oh, juicer is a great piece of equipment that'll make your food smaller. Like they already know what that is. Just show them juicers. But if someone's looking for something like uh, best juicing recipes or what are the benefits of juicing, they're not ready to buy a juicer yet. So get them into something like an ebook and for like five juicing recipes to boost your immune system. That's something that could work. So this is one of my lead magnets. It's my on-site SEO guide. It's something that I offer up in exchange for an email. What the great thing about that is, is you can follow up with these guys on an automatic email follow-up series, delivering them more value over time, and then you can also pitch them offers or get them into conferences in Thailand, stuff like that. So this, if this is something that interests you, here's my playbook on how to create a monetized email follow-up series. First things first, you gotta, you gotta create the lead magnet, right? You gotta brainstorm a topic. I recommend BuzzSumo for this. Type in your topic, and then you're gonna get a list of the most shares on this topic from top to bottom, uh, various pieces that are shared mo most commonly. After that, you need to get the thing written. I use this guy named Stefan. Here's his email address, he's awesome. After that, get the thing designed. I use this guy named Jeff. He'll make the PDF, he'll make it look super good. He's awesome too, go ahead and email him. Both these guys together shouldn't cost you much more than the ticket to this conference. Now, capture the leads. I use Thrive Leads for this, and where I'm putting these uh, opt-ins is three different places. First, inline call to action. So directly within the body of my content, I have little buttons that say, you know, click here for your free bonus to download juicer re recipes, something like that. Exit pop-up. So when people are about to leave the page, this is when I you know, throw up the last ditch effort to try to get that email address. And then sticky sidebar widgets. When I scroll down the page, you can, you Follows you down, tracks you down, ruins, ruins your experience, but captures leads. And then you need to write the email follow-up series. So here's what I recommend. In the first email, show a lot of personality. So if people can connect to this person that they're reading from, they're much more likely to purchase or click an affiliate offer down the road. So one thing you can do is just talk about who you are, the problems you had when you were struggling in this niche, what it was like breaking through those problems, and how excited you are to share that, share those breakthroughs with them. And then also use the PS to lead people in the next email. Do something like, Watch out for my email tomorrow. I'm going to share five ways to lose weight that don't involve giving up your favorite foods. People like this stuff. And then lastly, send daily emails. So daily emails, one after another, each day. Don't worry about over bothering them. You guys, we're in the, the age of ADD. You need to stay top of mind in order to work in digital marketing. So daily emails, and then once you've built up some rapport, pitch in the third or fourth email. Whoa. Okay. Okay. So here's some results I got from the email list. So in a short, short amount of time, we built it up to about 5,000 visitors. 
The amount of passive revenue increase from this email funnel, remember at the end of the funnel, I'm just recommending my favorite product. I'll give them a coupon at the end of it. We increased the revenue from this site by $2,500. Now, remember the interesting part about this is that if we're using a 40X multiple, I just increased the value of my website by $100,000 for about $600 worth of service. I'll take that any day. Another quick benefit is that you get to email blast out this list manually anytime you want to. So if a promo like Black Friday comes out, you email the list and you tell them, okay, check this out, they're ready to buy. And I got this email from my affiliate manager just saying, you want an iPad for winning our, our Black Friday contest. No, no idea if he, it was even going on. Check this out, this is website traffic. So 300,000 visitors per month, it's obviously very valuable for me because I'm doing affiliate marketing. But who else might find this traffic data useful? Any ideas? Anyone? Anyone? Yeah, well, yeah, buyers for sure. And the affiliate provider themselves, the people that I was referring it to, why? Because they can retarget these guys on Facebook. So I had this wild idea to try to monetize my Facebook pixel. And I'd never seen it before at this point in time. So I pitched it, and here's how it went. So. Hey John, you guys run any Facebook ads? In July, this traffic had uh, 31,000 visitors per month. That's going to continue to rise. I'll show them the graph. Uh, your competitor approached me about buying the retargeting pixel. I wanted to talk to you about it first. Hey Matt, thanks for thinking of us. Uh, definitely up for that. What are you looking for? Uh, your competitor hasn't made me an offer yet. Typically for pixels with this level of traffic, they go for about $1,000 a month. No idea. Um, if traffic 2x is down the road, then we can renegotiate, but I'm okay with locking that in, in for a few months. Right on, definitely makes sense. We're flexible the road, uh, down the road as traffic changes. Um, for now, we can do 1,000 for one month and test it. All right, so now I can sense that this is going to convert. We're going to get through here. I kind of switched the tone, tried to go for that conversion. Sounds good. Uh, here's a PayPal subscription. Get this started. Click here and you're done. As soon as that's, uh, that's paid, I'll let your competitor know it's not for sale, injecting a little bit more emotion into it. Please send me over your PayPal pixel code. I'll get it installed today, instant satisfaction. And if you don't mind, I'm doing a bunch of retargeting myself. I want to see how you're getting along with it. Let's stay in touch. So they know that they have a partner in this, not just someone making money. 30 minutes of work, flip price increased by $40,000. Easy breezy, this is the power of thinking outside the box for monetization. All right, so let's talk about it. We built up the website, we got it ranked higher, we did all the things, we did the super audit, we monetized, we got all the monies we could out of it. Now, the important thing is to how to figure out when's the best time to sell. It's all about the timing, right? What I recommend doing is throwing a similar niche to your site into Google Trends to try to see, is there any trendiness to it? Is there any chance that it'll fade away, right? So what we did is we took a similarness to us and we saw that it had a three-year rise before it kind of died out. Some, some niches, it's not gonna be like that. Like marriage is just pretty popular. <laughs> it's just not gonna go away. But some niches will, will tend to go away. Think about like segways, hoverboards, things like that. They faded out. So toss in a similar niche and then compare it to how's your niche going? Our niche was on a rise for about two and a half years. So we kind of decided it's about time to start thinking about listing this thing. The next thing what you want to do is you want to make a table like this. You want to be able to predict your flip price based on a 12-month average. So how the flip price is computed is basically take that 12-month average profit times a multiplier. So based on how things are going, if I held out till January, the site would sell for $500,000. But things were going our way, things were looking good, and we kept the site for a little bit longer and eventually got this valuation for $711,000, which we were very, very happy with. All right, so let's sum up what we talked about. We talked about how to vet a website for purchase, how to figure out diamonds in the rough, uh, the super audit technique, uh, the core algorithm updates, and TFIDF, all that kind of thing. A 2020 backlink strategy, how to flood your website with new content, how to get those content ideas delivered to you, some creative monetization hacks, and how to prepare for a half million dollar flip. So if you're pumped up to try this model, I've got some resources for you. First, download some free resources, diggitymarketing.com forward slash nomad summit. It's got my on-site guide that you saw earlier. It's got a backlink blueprint, a whole bunch of case study information, how to scale an SEO content business, a whole bunch of guides in there. It's great. If you want to learn affiliate SEO yourself, I have a course, affiliatelab.am. There's a lot of people getting awesome results. 
And then lastly, if you just want me to do your SEO for you, thesearchinitiative.com. Guys, thank you so much. Open for questions. Jerry, I'm coming. <laughs> thank you. So, yeah, there was a lot there. Um, I've seen you've got some resources. Great talk. Um, are these slides available after? No, but they can be. Okay. Um, for a price. <laughs> um, so before you mentioned uh, in one of your slides about finding out whether it's a good niche to enter and you'll do some trend research, how far back do you look? Is it 12 months? Is it last three months? For, tr for trends? Yeah. Uh, I just look at the current growth right now, but you also have to take into consideration what's what kind of niche it is. Like, if if it's carnivore diet, right? Yeah. Dieting is a niche, right? Di dieting is a fad. Like all of them don't last forever, right? So sometimes you just have to use your common sense. Even though carnivore is massively on the rise right now, is it going to be around in a couple of years? Probably not. So maybe it's maybe you just want to pass on it because of that, or maybe it's a one to two year project. And for monetization, you mentioned a lot of pop-ups and capturing leads. And um, I've clicked off websites when there's too many things flying in. I understand why they do it. But I was wondering if you use any um, software like Lucky Orange or Hotjar to actually see how far um, down the page users get, whether people click off. I I'm wondering if you're monitoring that. Yeah, I did before. And that's a really good point. So. I did find that the engagement quite dropped when you make it like too pop-up-y. So that's why I switched to using exit pop-ups. They're about to leave anyways. So, so uh, that's, okay. that's the point with that. Yeah, that was it. Thank cool. you. <laughs>